and welcome to lesson 3.2 of More Data Mining with Weka. In the last lesson, we looked at uh, decision rules versus decision trees. They're kind of similar representations, but they're interestingly different in how they express things. And we also looked at a bottom-up covering algorithm for generating rules called PRISM. If you did the activity associated with that lesson, then you will realize that PRISM is not really a terribly good machine learning method. It's not really meant for serious use. Uh, in this lesson, we're going to look at a couple of schemes for rule learning and uh, just show how to use them in Weka. So the first scheme we're going to look for, we're going to look at, is uh, called PART. And it's a way of forming rules from partial decision trees. So it's the basic separate and conquer algorithm. Make a rule, remove the instances it covers, and continue creating rules for the remaining instances. And to make a rule, part builds a tree. It builds and prunes a decision tree for the current set of instances and reads off the rule for the largest leaf, the most important rule if you like, and then it throws the tree away and carries on with a covering algorithm. Now it seems very wasteful and I suppose perhaps it is a bit wasteful. It turns out that you can build just a partial tree, you don't have to build a whole tree. Uh, and uh, that's how part works. The second method it's called Ripper, actually. In fact, in Weka, it's called JRIP. And uh, it's a basic incremental reduced error pruning algorithm. There's a kind of a class of algorithms that go by this name. So the idea is that PRISM is good at producing rules, but it produces exact rules. And typically, we want to produce rules that are not necessarily exact, but merely very good. So uh, what uh, incremental reduced error pruning is, does is it takes the instances, the training set, and splits them into two sets, one called grow and one called prune in the ratio two to one. And it uses the grow set for growing rules, adding clauses to rules until you get a perfect rule. And then it uses the prune set when you're pruning rules, deleting the clauses from the rule until you uh, get a good, uh, you're left with a good rule. So for each class, while there's instances of uh, that class in both these sets, we're going to use PRISM to create the best rule for, best perfect rule for, uh, for that class. And then we're going to calculate the worth of the rule. Now we need some measure of the worth of a rule. And there are different ways of measuring the worth of a rule and different incremental reduced error pruning algorithms do different things. For example, you might just use the success rate or you might use some more complicated thing, perhaps even some entropy kind of metric. Anyway, whatever you do, let's assume you've got a way of measuring the worth of a rule. So we calculate the worth of that rule and then we omit the final condition, the last one that we added, and look at the worth of that. And uh, if it's worthwhile, then we take away that final condition and carry on trying to remove conditions from the rule until we get an optimal version of the rule. So we build up the rule on the grow set and then we prune it back on the prune set until we get a rule whose worth is good. Turns out it's better to prune backwards than it is to prune on the way forwards. Again, it sounds a bit wasteful, but it's a good idea to prune, build up the whole rule and, the rule and then prune backwards. Then we just carry on. We select the rule with the largest worth, and uh, we print it and remove the instances it covers and carry on with the basic covering algorithm. Now, Ripper follows this by a fiendishly complicated global optimization step that's really detailed, really complex, not really very principled, but works really well. And I'm not going to tell you about that. It's just uh, not worthwhile. You'd never remember it. It's just too hard to. I mean, I don't remember it. It's just. It's just really complicated. But this is a basic kind of incremental reduced error pruning algorithm that it uses to generate the rule set in the first place. All right, well, let's go to Weka. Uh, I've loaded the diabetes data set, and I'm going to try J48 part and JRIP. So here we are in Weka. Uh, here's the diabetes data set, 768 instances. I go to classify, and I've already run J48. This is the result from J48. And I've got a decision tree here, quite a complicated decision tree. Uh, it's got uh, 20 leaves and a total of uh, 39 nodes in this tree. 
and it gets 74% uh, accuracy. Part produces a rule set that looks like this. See these rules? If plas is less than 127 and mass is less than 26.4, etc., then test it negative. In this data set, there are two classes, negative and positive. So there's a rule for negative and a rule for positive, and so on. And uh, this rule set has got uh, 13 rules. Uh, and these involve actually 25 separate tests in these 13 rules. And we get 75% uh, accuracy. And Ripper does really well, 76% accuracy there at the top. And it has only four rules. Amazing, eh? In fact, going back to the slide, here are the results, and here are the four rules. Actually, Ripper starts out by taking the majority class, to, in this case tested negative, and leaving that to the end. So it only produces rules for the other classes, and then leaves the majority class for a default clause like this. So tested positive is the smaller class, and tested negative is the larger class. And these are the rules it's come up with. Only four rules, nine tests, and best performance of all. That's pretty amazing. So part is quick and quite an elegant algorithm, really. Repeatedly constructing decision trees and discarding them is less, waste, less wasteful than it sounds. Incremental reduced error pruning is a standard technique, and Ripper does incremental reduced error pruning followed by a global optimization step. Usually produces fewer rules than part. Uh, there's some stuff uh, in the course text on uh, classification rules, so go and read that. And uh, the activity associated with this uh, lesson involves using the experimenter to do more, reli more reliable comparisons between rule systems. So I thought I'd end up by telling you about Australia and New Zealand. You know, a lot of people in the Northern Hemisphere think that Australia and New Zealand are really close together. Uh, this map is false. They're not that close together. Actually, in New Zealand, we call, we say there's three islands in New Zealand, the North Island, the South Island, and the West Island. The people who live there call it Australia. It's quite a long way from New Zealand, and the countries are completely different. In fact, here's a little encapsulation of Australia, what's in Australia, which is not very much, and a lot of dangerous things here in Australia. New Zealand's completely different. It's kind of clean and green and a nice place to live. So I just thought to leave you with that thought, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.